really feels he's on top of his game right now. He feels that he can just turn up for a week's training and beat guys like Celier. You know, he's, he's very, very confident. He's really enjoying being world champion. entrance of just about the grittiest, toughest, mentally hardest fighter in the world, Steve Collins from Dublin. Collins wearing that rugged fight face that he puts on in the week and fights away from it he's uh, a very amiable family man but uh, on nights like this he disguises it awfully well he does he locks himself away for several weeks he really does it right you know he's a he's a thorough professional he's been through the mill he's been in with the good fighters such a tough tough character and you can guarantee he's going to be in good form here I went to Jersey to watch him train. They actually moved away from Jersey for a while this time. They went back to Dublin and trained for a couple of weeks. I think, uh, without being too harsh about it, I think he has had trouble getting himself really motivated for this fight against Sele. He wants a fight against that brilliant American, Roy Jones. But having said that, he's such a pro that you can't imagine that he would skip too much on the preparation, enough to really let everything go having got this far. Tale of the tape, Frederick Sellier. Well, he was uh, born within a month of Steve Collins. They're just about the same age. Sellier is a couple of inches taller. Brave and committed he is. Both half a pound inside the 12 stone limit at the uh, weigh-in yesterday. Collins, who, well, I'm not sure how much longer he will be a super middleweight. It is quite tough for him to make. Sellier has had more fights, he's been around for a long time, and look at that, they've had, uh, what, 277 rounds, Collins 276 for Sellier, and uh, knockout percentage, not much in it really, Collins has been mixing at a higher level, these are WBO rules for this fight, there is a three knockdown rule, the bell can save a fighter only in the last round, if he's uh, on the floor, so we're ready to go, Steve Collins, six defence, of his WBO title. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we present our next World Championship featured attraction here at the London Arena, as brought to you by Frank Warren Sports Network in association with Don King Productions, as sponsored by Adidas, ART, and uh, The Sun. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the World Boxing Organization. The president, Francisco Valcarcel, supervisor at ringside, Luis Perez, along with the British Boxing Board of Control. The steward in charge is John Clifford. Introducing to you our judges, scoring this bout from ringside, Aubrey Erasmus, Roy Francis, and Paul Thomas. Presenting to you our referee in charge of this bout, working in this his 88th world title bout, Joe Cortez. All right, fans, here we go. We're ready for action with the WBO Super Middleweight Championship of the World, scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. I present to you first the challenger on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue trunks and hailing from Toulon, France. He weighed in at 11 stone, 13 and one half pounds, or 167 and one half US pounds. 
His record stands at 43 wins, six losses and three draws, with 29 of his wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the former European champion, currently ranked the WBO number one super middleweight contender, introducing uh, Frederic Sellier. And his opponent across the ring on my right is the defending world champion, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing tartan trunks, and hailing from Dublin, Ireland. He weighed in the same as his opponent, 11 stone, 13 and a half pounds, for 167 and a half US pounds. With a record of 34 wins, three losses, he has 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the two-time world champion making the sixth defense of his current title, introducing the WBO super middleweight champion of the world, known as the Celtic Warrior, introducing the Irish Steve. again Joe Cortez our referee in charge all right gentlemen we went over the rules in the dressing room I want good sportsmen like conduct obey my commands at all times take your hands good luck above you Joe Cortez 88th world title fight for him as the referee in the past he's handled Evander Holyfield against Riddick Bowe the third fight between them which was uh, very eventful he also handled uh, Azuma Nelson against Jim McDonnell over here this is Sellier here and the French are on a bit of a roll at the moment. Khalid Rahilu dethroned Frankie the Surgeon Randall for the light welterweight crown recently. Against the odds, Sellier is looking to cause another shot here. He's been very determined. Doesn't speak a word of English. Hasn't had much to say this week. Can he handle Collins? In the past with Steve Collins, in what have looked his least demanding defences, he's looked quite ordinary at times. Yes, he's the type of fighter that you feel needs a big challenge to really bring the best out of him. And that, you know, that's the one doubt in this sort of fight where he maybe just hasn't lifted himself because he maybe feels Sellier is not you know, a good enough challenge. Sellier will be aiming to prove otherwise. And he's got a record that you have to respect. Although, in his only previous attempt to become a world champion, he was stopped in six rounds by Frankie Lyles. He took a bit of a beating as well that night. Lyles, the current holder of the WBA crown at this weight. Sorry about all these uh, alphabet soups that the world titles seem to be these days. Now, this is a good attack from Collins. Some good body punches from him there. Referee Joe Cortez just a little concerned about one or two landing around the back of the head. Collins, as always, with the shamrock shaved into the side of his hair. Collins just looking to box a little, looking to find the range with the jab. He used to recently just rushing in, but he's not electing to do that. Body punches early on from Collins, who's not a knockout artist, but his unrelenting pressure and his strength certainly wears opponents down, as Nigel Benn found out twice. He says he feels like a rock, indestructible. Good countering right hand there from Sellier. smile spread across Sellier's face or as he was caught with the left hand what does the Frenchman bring to the party here he's walking onto a few he is he's coming in a little square on Collins landing with a, a decent right hand and also as you said the left hook was good that brought the, the little smile from Sellier it's been a pretty good opening round this for Steve Collins particularly with the body shots not too much from Sellier so far is finding him a pretty easy target as well. Sellier is occasionally landing with counters. There's a good right hand from Collins as well, who's looking pretty sharp. 
Collins is opening round. Well, this fellow has got such a magnificently tough granite chin that he can afford to take the odd punch. He's never, ever been stopped in all the big fights he's had at the top level. And there you see the body shots. Collins relied on that a little bit in that round. I thought it was a good, thoughtful start from Collins. He, he started behind the jab. He put Sally on the back foot and he put his punches together well. You see, he's, he's letting them go there, left and right. Celia comes back with a little counter, but Steve's already on the way out at that point. Good shots from Collins there. Celia, dangerous with the right hand a couple of times. He does have 29 10. knockout wins, Celia, in his 43 victories. Second out, round two. Second round, due to go 12, of course. Collins doing the right thing. He's commanding the center of the ring, keeping Celia on the back foot. Collins, I know, feels that Celia's style is made for him. He said, I don't need any disrespect, but I could walk in off the streets and beat Frederick Celia on my worst night. Good right hand from Collins there. Celia came back. He's quite prepared to trade. This is a brave and committed fighter, this Frenchman. Make no mistake about that. Celia having a little bit of success with his counter right. And I think there could well be a cut. He's just dabbing at the left eye, Celia. There's certainly some blood around. We'll try to identify the source of that. Again, sharp right hand from Celia. blood by the left eye yes it looks as if he's, he's sustained a cut to the left eyebrow Celia he was cut against Frankie Lyles but it's been a problem in the past for him Collins's boxing brain will be working overtime Good right hand from Collins in there, but Celia come back with a good right of his own. Celia making the jump up from European level to world level. He's failed to do it in the past. Having his successes here against Collins. Yes, he is, especially with the right hand. Collins just bringing the left hand back law when he jabs and Celia picking him up with that punch there it is again right on cue as you said it Glenn as if to give a specific example <laughs> and again Celia lands with the long right hand Collins has to lift the left hand up a little more even the second round and that's a good combination from Celia right hand and then a left He's not a fighter you can afford to take lightly. <laughs> Celia just punched the air for a moment there. I think he thought he did rather well in that round. Yes, I thought he did better. He was catching Collins. Collins was just giving Celia that little bit of room. And Celia was landing with a long right hand counter. And he caught Collins a few times. And certainly I would have given the, the share of the spoils in that round. Collins was just couldn't get his punches on just as well. Freddie Roach with his back to you there. When he turns around, you see he's a bit of a Chris Evans uh, look-alike. He's got a gym in Hollywood, the trainer, uh, where Denzel Washington and John Travolta have been known to do their workouts. There's Collins. I think this could be where the, the cut is. They're both in there there. Just see it again from another Call angle. Ten seconds. It could have been that slicing right hand down the, the side of the eyebrow. He certainly he dabbed that at the eye just after that. Round three. 
third round. Collins in his tartan trunks. Of course, the head's coming dangerously close together there. And Soleil won't like that, particularly now he's already sustained a cut. Collins has changed styles. He used to be something of a counterpuncher. Now he's a marauding brawler. Not always pretty to watch, but pretty effective. He's currently starting to pick the pace up a little bit. Collins, I think they told him in the corner, he's got to close the distance down, he's got to start putting a bit of pressure on Salia, or he'll start growing in confidence. Be interesting to see whether Collins gets that left glove up a little more too, to avoid those right hands that he's been shipping. just work relentlessly away even in the three defeats he's had in his 37 fights two of those were by split decisions and both in championship fights one against Reggie Johnson the other against Sambu Kalambe the only other man to beat him was Mike McCallum he's won his last 13 now over four years Collins it's quite a run and he has a feeling this is his time because he's seen it all before and he's the sort of fighter that thinks on his feet so he'll be looking for the owners he'll be puzzling things out in his mind how's the best way to trap Celia cuts opened up again from the Frenchman and the heads coming dangerously close together there Joe Cortez a bit worried about that French coming from Celier's corner from trainer Alain Ruoco who used to be a welterweight back in the 1970s afraid I can't do the translation for you even if I could hear it clearly it's better work from Collins again getting the center of the ring leading first and generally for this part in, in the round just getting off better good little right hand in there as it worked in close Sellier's corner are telling him to throw more combinations. And some blood now that's wiped off on the side of Collins's head. I think that's come from the cut that Sellier has. I don't think Collins himself has sustained a cut. What do you think, Glenn? That was Collins' round. He was dominating a little more there. He's just puzzling out Celia's style. He's got a, a difficult style to get to, and it's difficult for Steve to close the distance down that well. He's trying to get in there, but then Celia just leans away and then comes back. When you see it there, the, the, the punch has landed are much better for Collins. I think that's the story of the fight so far. But Celia, every now and again, has his successes with these little counters, especially with the right hand. Frederick Sellier in the other corner. That's his record. Look at this uh, 53rd fight today. Corners. He's won 43, just six seconds. defeats, and usually in pretty good company. People like Callum Bay, Lyles, Agostino Cardamoni, a European Round champion. Four. The kind of fighters who've beaten him. Sellier in the blue trunks, the man from France. This 24 hours of boxing has gone well for the home fighters, but Collins getting caught by punches, rather too many for his liking. This again, as he comes out with that left hand, he gets hit with that right one from Celia. And twice he was rattled with good right hands amongst them combinations. And scorecard with Collins on a two-point lead. Collins himself landed with a, a good right hand in there. Sully a very cagey opponent. And this, of course, is a big, big chance. Probably a last chance for Sellier. He knows that. Late in his career. 
He'll want to seize it. That's better from Collins. Yes, he just caught Sally as he came up there. Land were too good, and the left and the right were good punches. Good doubling up on the jab from the Frenchman. Collins in his fourth defence in the last ten months or so. And in a little aside to me before I was about to do an interview with him over in Jersey, he said, I am very tired. I need a good rest after this. Very short little left hook in there again from Collins, who switched from the body, long right hand, the body to the left hook. Some good body shots in there that time from Collins. Must be a very discouraging man to fight, must he, Steve Collins? You hit him with good shots, and he still wants to keep on coming forward at you. Yes, he can. He can really fight, and he, also he can box. He can think when he's in there. He's not just a one-dimensional fighter. In this round, he's been sharper throughout. Just starting to land more often with a long stabbing left and right. Back Sally up against the ropes, but the Frenchman is clever enough to get out of there. Of course, he's worked the jab good in this round, trying to double and treble up that jab. That's a good combination from Collins. Comes around, he was nice, he was in control there. You just see he's getting a little bit of momentum now, just starting to get his rhythm, just shrugging the shoulders and letting them long punches go in. And there wasn't a great deal coming back from Celia there. Cones just getting his jabs going there. We see Cones 15 to 4. So he's just starting to get that nice rhythm in these rounds. Collins, who's been uh, doing his sparring in Jersey with a uh, very promising cruiserweight, Kelly Oliver, a full time ABA champion, who he says he really rates. Now we saw Sully get a bit of success with his short and right hand in there and again. So he's far from out of it. Cole, we see it from another angle. Colin's such a good chin. Good work for the jab by Collins there. But he certainly is more brawler than boxer these days, Steve Collins. Corner have worked on the Cellier cut. Patch it up for the moment, but it could reopen again once a punch lands on it. Like that one, right hand. Countering right from Cellier, but Collins doesn't care almost. He's prepared to take those. Walk on through them to apply his own pressure. That was a good left right and again with a jab there to follow up. Good punches from Collins. Impressive accuracy in this round from Collins. He stepped it up here. Celier <laughs> begins to look more tired. His face becoming a bit of a mess. Finding like so many fighters have found before him that it's almost impossible to break the fighting spirit of Steve Collins. That was on the border, and maybe below from Collins. I thought it was just about legal, referee had his doubts. Yes, he was just pulled down, and I think that's why I went a little bit lower. But he's certainly getting his shots off well now as he's warming up. Again, a good left right from Collins. But Celia come back with a good right there. Chance of Steve O, Steve O, ring around this London arena. And that's a cracking right hand from him as well. Picking his punches pretty well in this round, Collins. There he 
he is again. Salier is beginning to take some consistent punishment. He's, he's relying on his boxing a lot better than we've seen him. And now the, the cuts opened up on the bridge of the nose, that bad one too. There's a lot of blood about. And that's why we've got a timeout. Well, they're taking Salier over to Collins's corner, but uh, we're just going to have a look at that, the doctor. It's over. Well, I must say, I'm surprised by that. That seems very, very rapid. There's Gemma, Steve Collins's wife. She'll be glad to have him home again. He spent so much time away training. But uh, I don't know. It's a cut across the bridge of the nose. The doctor stopped the fight. Sellier's camp can't believe it. And we've had this once or twice in Steve Collins' fights with the, the, the first Nigel Benn one with the ankle injury. Uh, now this, I mean, should they have given him a bit more time? Well, it came all of a sudden, but it did look quite bad. The, the doctor had a good long look at it. There was a lot of blood about. It looks a bad one on the bridge of the nose and the eye. But Collins was really getting into a nice rhythm there, and it was a good. It looked to be a good choppy left right that that did the damage. Cut there above the left eye, and then the one by the bridge of the nose. That does look a very deep gash, I must say. One hesitates to be critical of officials stopping fights, particularly uh, in view of the safety regulations. But the fact is that Steve Collins is still WBO super middleweight title holder and will still be chasing Roy Jones if he can ever track him down, the man who holds the IBF version of this title. There it is. Just again, that choppy right hand. I think that's what did the damage. He came back good with the left hook, Collins. He was really just getting his rhythm going there. And you see he dabs at it straight away. And that was... It did look a, a very deep, bad cut there, but it was definitely... A punch that did it, an overarm, overarm right hand, good punch from Collins. He was in good form, I thought, tonight. He, he stood back a little more and boxed, depended on the jab, depended on the left, right, but he was in good form. The form book is obeyed. Steve Collins is still the champion, and that was his sixth defence. Now he'll be literally, he says, knocking on Roy Jones' door in Pensacola, Florida, to try to make him fight him. We'd love to see it. Here it is officially from Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of two minutes, 20 seconds of round number five. Our referee in charge, Joe Cortez, stops the contest on advice to the ringside physician. He's the winner by way of technical knockout. Still the WBO super middleweight champion of the world, the Celtic warrior, Irish Steve Collins. I think Steve Collins could really have wished for any more from this night, a safe defense of the title. He's impressed and made, probably made more new friends here at the London Arena tonight with his style of performance. And yes, Roy Jones does know that he's looking for And him. ladies and gentlemen, how about a hand for a fine effort here tonight to the challenger, Frederick Sadie Barry, May. your thoughts? I thought uh, Collins stepped up impressively and although the fight was maybe stopped uh, slightly prematurely with the cut was enough, I think he was on the, the, the beginning of a downward slope and Collins was beginning to start to chip away at him and, and grind him down. An impressive performance, stepped up when he had to and uh, done his job impressively. Let's hope they have a good little spell at home in Dublin. Nicky Piper, your thoughts? Yeah, I thought he was actually looking rather unimpressive in the first four rounds, taking it a, a bit too easy and ended up shipping, shipping some punches along the way. But uh, Barry's right, as soon as he stepped the pace up, there was only one winner. And uh, within a round or two, I think he would have stopped Frederick Sellier. Joe Kazaki is also with us. Joe hopes very much to become a part of this world super middleweight picture in due course. First up, you're not bad at this job either. You said Sellier had a history of cuts, and that was his undoing again. Yeah, I thought that's the only way um, he gets stopped. I knew he took a good punch. I knew Steve Collins is more, is, is you know, a very strong person. And, uh, but he you know, doesn't have the biggest punch in the world. Right? So a bit ridiculous stop with great cuts. I thought it was a bit premature, but you know, pretty impressive uh, performance. Thanks, Steve. Since I came to Britain, I've 
Britain. You've taken me, you've adopted Steve, me as one of your own. I feel like Jack Charlton over here. Thanks very much. Thank you. All right, the success rate appears to grow more Charlton-like with each successful defence for Collins. Steve's with Ian Dark. Well, Steve, still the champion, six defences. Satisfied with that? Yeah, um, everybody thought I had a problem getting motivated. I had a slight problem getting motivated because I knew I was a class above this guy. So I just went out and I said, I'm going to knock the kid out. I wasn't going to go to the point, so I was sure of that. And that was the point I wanted to prove. I'd also like to take this opportunity to uh, tell Roy Jones, Roy Jones, I'll fight you anywhere, anytime, any place. You're running scared. People call you the fighter who's afraid to fight Steve Collins. I've beaten the best in this division, not taken on the iron. You fought nobody. I'll expose you for what you are. You're a pretender. Anytime, any place, I'm ready. Well, that's quite a, a call for Roy Jones to get in the ring with you. Now, you've been threatening to go to Pensacola and knock down his door to get this fight. I mean, is that uh, just publicity talk? Are you really going to do it? Roy Jones is running scared. I'm going to come knock on his hall door. I'm going to stand in front of him. I'm going to ask him, why is he afraid to fight me? Why won't he fight me? Be a man and fight me. Well, we'd like to see it happen. Just going back to Frederick Sellier tonight, uh, he made it pretty tough and competitive as long as it lasted. He was a durable guy. I caught him some good hard shots. Um, he cut up pretty bad. Uh, he was supposed to come to me, but he got on his bike and moved a bit, so it lasted a little longer than I anticipated. But I was very relaxed. I was very confident. And uh, it wasn't until I stepped up a gear in the fifth round was it over. If you don't get to fight... Roy Jones, how do you see your future mapping out in the coming months? I mean, you were telling me when we were in Jersey that you'd like a bit of a rest because you've had a tough old schedule, haven't you? This is my fourth fight just over 10 months. My, uh, my kids are watching the fights tonight. I want to send my love to my children. I haven't seen them for a long time. Going to go home, take a holiday, but I won't be going away for long. I'll be back soon, and I'm going to continue reigning in the Super Midway Division until there's no one else left to fight. Your wife, Gemma, thinks you're a bit of a stranger, doesn't she, by now? All this time you've been in training camp. That's why she loves me so much. She only sees me part-time. <laughs> well done tonight, Steve. Thanks a lot. So Freddie Roach is long-time trainer, and Collins can go and enjoy the fruits of their labours here tonight.